Guess what? Last one for this week. So I want to integrate a little bit about what we've learned about cardiac output and think about how this changes during exercise. It's something that um, is very physiologically important. So remember that cardiac output is equal to stroke volume times heart rate. I'm going to write that as soon as I get my mouse working again here. Oh, it's right there. Cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate. So one way to think about how exercise affects heart rate is to first compare athletes and non-athletes. We'll then also look at change during exercise in both of these groups. So remember that we did one of these calculations already. We calculated cardiac output um, given a stroke volume and heart rate, something you should be able to do. So let's do that again, a stroke volume of 70 and beats per minute. So this is stroke volume, right? Here, heart rate. Um, a non-athlete might have a cardiac output of 5,250 milliliters per minute. And that's a measure of the efficiency of the heart, how well those tissues are getting freshly oxygenated blood, removing carbon dioxide, getting glucose. It's a helpful thing to have happen. Um, an athlete, this might look a little different, someone who's trained quite a bit. And typically the stroke volume is higher at rest. So this is at rest here, right? Like it says right there. Because the heart muscle is actually stronger. The stroke volume is due right to that contractility. It's actually larger muscle, typically stronger heart muscle. Your heart can get stronger, just like the rest of your muscles stronger cardiac muscle. Because of this, this individual, assuming same body size, right, same um, sex, biological sex, is gonna have a lower heart rate because in order to get the same cardiac output, the heart rate doesn't have to be as high. This is actually a reason athletes have lower resting heart rates is because the heart muscle is stronger. So therefore it beats a little bit slower so athletes tend to have lower resting heart rates. Okay, so now what happens if these two individuals exercise? How does cardiac output change and how does it differ between these two individuals? Let's assume both people increase their heart rate to 100 beats per minute, not super high, right? That's like not um, intense exercise, but what's gonna happen? Um, these individuals are gonna be able to increase their heart rates to different extents. So again, we've got this formula. If we've got our non-athlete, 70 times 100, 7,000 milliliters per minute at exercise. This is now, right, at exercise. Great, this individual now has more blood traveling to all their muscles. They can continue to exercise at this intensity, um, oh, low to moderate intensity in this case. Okay, what happens to our athlete who increases to 100 beats per minute? Well, they started with a higher stroke volume. So they increase their heart rate to 100 beats per minute and their cardiac output increases even more, right? So they're able to increase cardiac output even more than someone who is a non-athlete. So typically a non-athlete can, oh no, increase heart rate by four, I'm sorry, increased cardiac output by four to five times during exercise. That's necessary to be able to get blood to your exercising tissues. Athletes often can increase more like seven times or even more. Um, and that's partly because of that stronger muscle tissue. So I have asked you a question here. So based on this, cardiovascular system is designed to be able to increase cardiac output. This is, this is your last learning check for the week. Um, so the question is about horses. Horses are amazing athletes and they can increase their cardiac output dramatically. Um, so they're better at humans at increasing their cardiac output as well as respiration and sweating. Here's some data. 
here's a horse's heart, first of all, humongous. Um, this is a rabbit here. We'll see cow hearts in lab. So here's some data. Pause if you need to look at this more thoroughly. Heart rate at rest, and then at exercise. Heart rate increases, right? We've also got blood pressure listed here. Arterial blood pressure, which we'll talk more about next week, but you know um, a little bit about blood pressure already. This mean, I'll talk more about how we get that one number of blood pressure. Higher blood pressure though is gonna mean higher pressure, um, working a little harder, generating more pressure. Then we've got cardiac output here, changes from rest to exercise. So based on this data, these changes in these three parameters, do you think the goal of the cardiovascular system of this horse, but it's actually gonna be similar with all mammals. That's why we're looking at this example because we are also mammals. Um, do you think the goal is to maintain blood pressure or maintain cardiac output? What's, what's our homeostatic variable here?